the reason we're here is because uh, David has graciously offered the hot seat as a boot camp opportunity where he spends three days with us to help work on problems that we have. And um, the only payback he asks is that we share that information, whatever the takeouts, take takeaways we have or aha moments that we get from that moment. So I'm going to try and touch on some of those things um, tonight with this presentation. Now, um, I do have to caution you that I'm a level one trader uh, with dangerous uh, uh, awareness of some level two and level three stuff. So if you're a level two or three trader and you just want to go make money, that's fine. But um, I'm hoping that this might be a group opportunity to look at some of the issues that I'm having and um, maybe people can ask questions or make suggestions or we can work as a community to, to uh, try and address some of these things because these are things that I'm actively working on now. And um, uh, the reason I chose this topic is because I feel like every time I go into the market, um, we are looking at two opposite sides. There's always uh, an argument for buys and an argument for sales. We even look for three uh, opportunities for buy, three opportunities for sells, and we have to make decisions based on that. That can do a mess with your psychology. <laughs> now, uh, about three weeks ago, uh, Megan, oops, wait a minute. Why is this not working? Oh, there we go. Okay, Megan Scaff did a fantastic uh, presentation on um, your belief system and how that affects your uh, your norms, your rules that you use, how you behave, and the results and consequences that come out of that. So um, what I have listed on this slide are, are just a few of what I call my trading challenges, which is a polite way to say these are problems or issues or obstacles that I'm confronting um, every day. And um, just a few of them listed here. Um, when we started this, I told David that I have every one of the challenges that he's addressed so far in these boot camps with every single trader. <laughs> um, but the ones we're going to look at today are um, the difficulty I have making goal, uh, even on positive days. It always seems to take me very long time. Uh, I don't know if anyone else has had that experience where it, it, instead of uh, getting in, getting out, and getting done, it might be there for two hours and still scraping up to the goal, uh, whatever that might be. Uh, then the consequences, or one of the consequences that uh, that results in a lot of negative days, and you end up with a declining equity curve because you have a very small positive days and uh, those big negative days. That's what's going to happen to your equity curve. So um, uh, the other part of this, or the reason of this, is something we actually talked about in today's session. And that was uh, paralysis of analysis. I'm a very timid trader. Uh, I was uh, I done the the trading uh, uh, character and it, I'm, I'm supposed to be in it, methodical analytical, which means I like to look at all the issues or everything that's important, um, uh, even um, different. Uh, I used to even look at a lot of different indicators and try and find the best combination of indicators. What's you know what is the what's going to give me the right answer? I want to know which direction I need to go, um, and that's key. Well, the result of that, or the consequence of that, is that you don't take enough trades. So, there we go. Uh, why should that be? We have a very simple way to, we've learned how to trade with trade the fun. Most of us, when we start to learn to trade, we uh, look at, um, we probably started, uh, with a system that says, uh, pick the correct, follow the trend. The trend is your friend. Pick the correct direction, and then uh, put on a trade, and then set a stop loss uh, such that your take profit is twice of what your um, uh, twice of, twice of, twice of what you hope to make in the trade. Sounds good, uh, but there's a lot more to it than that, and so. With trade the fun, we've got uh, we've got a more in depth look at how we have to start this kind of thing. So, um, we have some rules that we follow, and before we even start trading, 
uh, we look at the market structure. We usually start with the hour chart and we take a look at the broad uh, trend and we say that we might have a trend that's either up or down. We might have a ranging market that's within boundaries. And then we might have an outside range where we have something that um, goes with nothing to the left of it on the chart. Um, then we look at bias. So now that we've looked at the market and we have this picture of the market structure, we try to figure out uh, what which direction we want to trade. So we're looking for risk versus reward in this case. And we're also looking at something called key price indicator where our bias might change. So if you go in with looks, looks like an uptrend, we have to decide, well, at what point does that uptrend look like it's going to stop? Uh, and it is reversed and we need to start uh, shifting into uh, uh, sells instead of buys. Um, and the last thing we look at is uh, price cycle, which is essentially the distance from at the beginning of a, a, a price movement to where it stops and changes direction. And um, that helps us determine how heavy we want to be in the market. So at this point, we've got a picture, and hopefully this all happens quickly. Uh, Dave likes to have it in a few seconds. He said, you look at the hourly trend and know immediately where you're going. Uh, in other words, where you're going to make your money. You go to the minute chart, and then you determine what we call plans A, B, and C. So plan A tells us that um, uh, we might have, we may have a bias that says to buy. So we want to go into buys, and we're going to choose a, a zone on the chart where we want to put some buys. One of the advantages of the trade fund approach is that we use what we call a shotgun approach. We don't try to hit the exact price. Um, we put on a series of trades where we can get in the in the right zone. Um, and um, that should average out to something that's going to make money for us. And we have a B zone where if it moves against us, uh, we have to do some correcting. And so in the B zone, we're going to um, move, uh, you know, we might be trading, we might be doing the same direction, buying, we might be have to shift direction to sells. Uh, but in any case, the B zone is... Uh, my impression is that it's when you, we start goes against you. And uh, that works for 80% of the market. When you run into a market that's a 20% market, um, that's the, uh, we call that the C or the C later, where we would have to close all trades and, and try and keep that loss to a minimum. Ideally, the loss is something that we can fix in a day or two. So, is my, there we go. Uh, the next part is actually placing the trade. So we now have the plan in place. We have plans in A and B where we know where we want to place the trades. And the first thing we learn is we want to enter with proper trade placement we call PTP. So uh, the, we, there's rules for this too. The, one of the most important rule is you don't buy at the end of a price cycle in the same direction that the price is moving. Um, and last, there's an exception, and this is where the confusion comes in, because there are, for all these rules that we have, there are exceptions. So we're going to talk about that uh, as we go get into this later. Um, but once you've entered the trade with your in your zone with the uh, with the number of trades that you uh, are comfortable with, your next job is to manage the trade. So if you're lucky and it's going in your direction, we do what we call build. You simply add a pullbacks. Um, if it goes against you, we fade the trade. In other words, we add as it goes against us, but we add at appropriate places, again, with proper trade placement, PTP, to um, try and catch the turn before it, uh, uh, it gets to the next zone. And then um, uh, if it's in a ranging market, we might just be wobbling uh, and, and looking for the zero, one, two, threes. Um, the, the most important part is actually the exit. So we learn in, in Trade the Fund that uh, we want to exit for profit, obviously. So what we've done is we've set up, we've done a, a setup. And so wherever our setup tells us, that's where we expect to get profit, ideally max profit. And what we do instead of just hitting the sell button or sending the close button is we um, 
uh, put a stop loss on, which we call securing the trade. And so the stop loss is at an appropriate place where uh, we'll get our maximum profit, um, or at least profit uh, profit more than uh, you know uh, what we uh, at least a minimum profit that we hope to get in the first place. Um, you can also exit for goal. What we we as we said we like to for the goal we want to get in, get out, and get done. So. Um, we want the goal, if you're just starting for the day and you want to protect your, you're in a live account and you want to protect it, you might just exit for goal, um, depending, it, and that'll depend on how, with a cattle action when you get to the gold. And then we also have one where the, the mark, it's gone very strongly in your favor and um, you feel before it's about to turn, uh, we have a prove me wrong secure where we're only taking a fraction risking a fraction of what we've gained so far in the hope that it may go further and uh, turn into a ride the wave for us. And a ride the wave just means that it's going way past what we expected. Then, of course, the exit might be the close all if you're in that unfortunate position that I'm sure none of you have experienced where it's gone in the wrong direction too far. So if it's so, if we've got this plan and we're told to follow the rules, we should be able to be profitable. It sounds reasonable. Why am I not making money? And basically for me, it comes down to uh, two different things. Uh, I don't exactly understand the rules in the sense that there are a lot of exceptions and the level two and level three traders um, actually bend the rules. Um, we'll talk about, we'll give an example of one of those in, in the coming, upcoming slide. Uh, and these, uh, and so that makes a difference if you're not sure what you're doing. So how do you get around that? But more importantly is the psychological barrier. Everybody gets to a point where they finally do understand the rules and something in the mental capacity is stopping them. They're just not, um, not able to do it. And uh, I have a number of these. Um, so I'm gonna talk about a couple of these in this presentation. Um, the first one was, as I said, I have trouble reaching the daily goal. I wasn't even getting, um, it takes me a couple hours to get uh, any kind of significant gain. And um, David had a, an interesting fix for that. So we're going to look at that first. Uh, but the other things have to do with these uh, fuzzy rules, understanding how market conditions might affect uh, the market structure. So that after we've done this analysis, we do have to be aware of uh, what I'm going to call market conditions. And the, my biggest uh, concern right now is cutting the winners. Um, we've all, we're all told to let our winners run and cut our losses. And um, uh, my, uh, uh, my, my biggest uh, conflict right now, internal conflict that I'm having when I talk about when I have these discussions is uh, when it comes to cutting the winners. So uh, let's take first. We'll take a look at what uh, at daily goal. So when we're going for the goal, um, it pays to take chances. It says fortune favors the bold. We have conflicting ideas here that are going on in my head. Um, we have to get in to a trade, or you're not going to get any profit. Um, but that analytical component wants me to look at a lot of things before I take that trade. I want to make sure it's in the right position. Um, uh, want to um, make sure I have all the everything, all the stars aligned <laughs> and get to the right place so that I know that when I take place the trade, it should do what I expect it to do or what the market is supposed to do and be able to benefit from that. So let's back up a minute and see what we mean by the goal. So uh, the good, when I say get in, get out, get done, what we're talking about is limiting our exposure to the market. We have, we want to make money. How much money we want to make depends on um, our own comfort level and our own uh, uh, desires and our own skill level. So uh, the trick is to get that done in as short as amount of time as possible. And as I said, it's taking longer. And the longer you're exposed to the market, the long it takes me too long. So the longer you're exposed to the market, the long longer it takes to um, get the profit that you want. 
So basic, basically, all it takes is one lot moving one pit. You take one trade, one lot, and you get your $10. Um, if you uh, divide that by 10, you've got your mini lots, you get a dollar, and you've got the micro lots for 0.1. So uh, depending on your, your uh, uh, account size, you're going to have to make decisions about what size you're going to use. And also how the market's moving. Remember when we do the, talked about the price cycles, the price cycle determines what lot size we want. If the market's moving well, you don't need as much. You can make the money faster um, with a, a volatile market than you can if it's just uh, stretching or just uh, nothing sleeping. Uh, and so where did I get all these numbers from? So let's talk about what the goals are. So the goal is we usually think in terms of percentages. Of course, that means we have to make money. So we do convert our percentages to a dollar. I'm going to convert the percentage to a dollar goal just for discussion today. Um, but what do we have to control uh, to uh, for this time factor that's important? We really only have two things that we can do. The number of trades we take and the lot size. As you can see, you increase the lot size, you're going to get more money. Um, so increasing the number of times you do that should get you more money. So these are the factors we have control of. There's not a lot of control over the pips because the market's going to either be volatile or not. And so the number of pips that you can get for a trade uh, is more in control of the market. Now, if you don't get as many pips as you want uh, when you put your trades on, you have to repeat that process, whatever your zone process is. So these numbers just come from, um, as I said, we, we, we're we currently talking about a quarter percent uh, because uh, I think at one point, uh, Dave was trying to go for a percent a day and we've backed off of that and we figured out you could you could copy your trades. We could you could actually copy four accounts and get a one percent by just doing a quarter percent four times. So what does that mean uh, based on account size? If you have a hundred thousand dollar account, you're going after two hundred fifty dollars. So what lot size do you need? Oh, and where do these numbers come from? These are Dave numbers. Dave says uh, every day he goes for ten trades, ten pips. So that's how I pick this 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 amount. This is his his uh, intention when he gets into the market. He's looking for a zone in the market where he can put on 10 trades and get his 10 pips. Um, and um, if you do the arithmetic, you find out that the micro mini lots, uh, 0.25 mini lots taken 10 times going through 10 pips should give you that uh, dollar goal that you're after. Now you don't always get the 10 pips the first time you put your zone on. You might only get three or four. Uh, or a few. And so if you do, that's where the iterations would have to increase. Um, and so, um, let me just grab my pen here. Uh, if, you, if you let Anubis choose your lot size, Lumen Anubis actually picks a 0. 0.5. And so, or 0. 0.0, yeah, yeah 0. 0.5 for uh, 100, 100K or amount, uh, uh, 100K account. Um, I was using a 10K account because when we started the prop firm thing, we were using 10Ks. And so Anubis said to use 0 0.05. So all Dave did was suggest that I up the 0 0.05 to 0 0.2 um, lots. And sure enough, lo and behold, when you multiply that by four, you make your money four times as fast. So instead of uh, spending an hour uh, getting to goal, uh, or two hours getting to goal, we, I was finding that with only a few trades, I was able to get to goal. Yeah, it's like magic. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. I hope you have that slide back. Everybody have that slide back. <laughs> Um, anyway, yep. okay, so so this is this is the thought process that I'm going through with goal. Now, uh, what this means is that my trading style is going to be different from what I call the uh, normal trading style for for um, the trade the fund. Uh, in in the trade the fund, we talk about uh, different games. We talk about the early, middle, and late games. Um, and that just means how many trades do we have, have on simultaneously. And ideally, uh, to minimize risk, we like to keep 
for for uh, the early game, uh, typically Dave will just talk about keeping the, the number below 10. Um, and then middle game, if you start to get into the B zone, you, you're up to this, you're, you're increasing that number. And then uh, late game is when you're close to risking out. Uh, notice that if you have 25 trades on, you're close to the 2.2% or 2.5% um, for your uh, account. And so you want to be careful um, at that point. Um, so, but what that means is if for, for my style trading, I might only have one or two trades on and that would be early game for me. So I have to watch for not take any trades in zone A until that's moved out um, to zone B where I might be start adding uh, to compensate for the market action. Uh, and then at, 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 and late game for me might be closer to everybody else's early game. But there is a caveat to that. Um, one thing is that you will, you can risk out sooner or you uh, not sooner, but um, with fewer trades. So you do have to be careful of that. It also means you have to be careful where you place your trades. Remember I said with trade the, the fund, we use what we call a shotgun approach because we don't try to pick the exact um, place where we think the, the turn is. Um, and with the light trading, you have to be more of a sniper. So you do have to be more careful about the proper PTP uh, that you're using. Um, but that that simple change alone made a big difference in terms of um, how close I get to goal. So now I'm getting to goal closer, um, but I'm still struggling with some of the other issues. Uh, so the second issue I said I wanted to look at was understanding how market conditions affect structure. We said the first thing we do is determine a market structure. We're looking for um, trending, ranging, outside range, or maybe that 20% marching market or some other uh, market um, uh, that um, does not fit our normal market structure. And so um, the reason you're looking at market structure is because you're looking at what we call the wide view. You need to know what the big picture is. Even when you're watching the trades as they go through and it's very easy to get caught up in the trades as they're moving, um, you're better off with uh, uh, knowing, having your targets and you get that from the, the uh, wide view. Um, on the other hand, um, you still have to keep an eye on the candle action, the present candle action, because the we've learned that there's a lot of different types of candles that we might observe that affect how we view what's going on. Um, we've got reach candles, we've got candles that break the structure, we've got candles that are stalling, we have wicks, uh, and each of these might determine how we view the market. Um, so, um, The, the, the differences come in when we talk about um, or the exceptions start to come in the rule, when we're talking about market conditions. We said the basic structure is, is pretty straightforward. There's only three things we're looking for. And the, the rules will differ for each of these three structures. For the trend, we're trying to find the apex. For the range, we're simply um, looking for the breakout. We're counting zero, one, two, three until something breaks. And then if it goes outside that range, we're looking for um, the turn at some point that uh, when it, once it's gone past where we expect to see it to go, it does come back and, and retrace. There's always a retracement, a reaction to, to the market action. But we find that the, the different things might Im impact this. We have the time of day. Um, there's a reason we have our classes between 9 and 11 Eastern time. That's when the New York stock market opens and there's most activity. So most of the volatility should happen during that time. Those of us who have tried to trade in the afternoon or the evenings or overnight, and I don't mean overnight meaning putting a trade on and waiting, I mean actually trading during the night, um, the volatility just dies. And so you don't have a lot of pip action. Uh, you'd have to be very big and you have to be very correct. We find it in the summer season, we're, we're more helped by um, the uh, ride the wave approach than we are by counter trending because uh, the market tends to drift or march during the summer. 
And uh, the other thing we have to watch for, and we do this every day, is we look at the news before we take a trade. We find out what time the um, something's going to happen. And is it a red folder or orange folder or what's going to happen? Because that also impacts our decisions. So basically, we have to start with the wide view um, because that's going to tell us our targets and, and, the, and help us determine our bias. But the candle action becomes very important um, for um, making final decisions. So what I'd like to do is take a, a, a look at one of these situations and take advantage, the, the community can participate in this. I want to take a look at one of the situations that I was looking at during my boot camp week, um, where we have one of these market conditions. So I hope everybody can see that chart. Can everybody see the candles here? Because that's important for the question I'm going to ask. If if that's too small, I can try and zoom in on it. I, I think we're good. We can see it. All right. Okay, good. Okay, so here's the the background. We, I said first we have to know the market structure. Well, the market structure for this day was definitely down. If you looked at the hour chart, um, the uh, trend was down, and so it was clear uh, where we wanted to go. So, um, however, there was news at this time. And in fact, this is the news candle. Well, when you trade news, there's three parts of the news. The first is the pre-news activity, and we often talk about a pump and dump where the market might move up or move in a certain direction before the news and then dump the other direction after the news. And so uh, in this case, we see this pumping up uh, before the news. And um, because of that, David actually taught me a new technique, which I meant to tell you, I, I used later on, David, although by accident, <laughs> where we took a sell before the news and then the idea was to get out as soon as the the, the market dumped and so we made some profit here um, and um, then the second part of the news is the the news candle itself where you want to fade that whatever direction it's going so in this case you'd be buying down here or selling up here you see this one came back to the center and then there's the after the news you have to decide is it continuing or is it going to uh, return to its original uh, trend thing so what we have here is what I was facing that day. And so I'd like to invite the community to um, suggest what you think we want to do here. Do you see a continuation? Do you see the reversal? Uh, do, in other words, do you want to be in buys or sells here? And then I'll tell you what uh, actually happened or what uh, Dave suggested to me and what I thought. So you can either notate or you can put in the chat or you can use your mic. Um, what do you see, buys or sells? Or nothing. Yeah, buys. I think it might change. continue uh, in buys because the blue candle came back, but it didn't come all the way to fifty percent. Very good. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly that. That's exactly what Dave told me. Now I thought it was sells because I'm looking at all this Wix action up here, and I'm remembering the market structure. Um. So the market structure when originally was sell. So I said, well, it's going back into its old trend, but um, uh, you can, they, Dave was saying, take a buy here. And I'm thinking, okay, well, if we take a buy, we better have a plan. And so this <laughs> is where the plans A's and B's work. Um, the plan A says, if we're buying here, uh, obviously if it goes in our favor, we're just gonna secure at some point. But the plan B says, um, we need to, uh, it's going to move uh, against us. And so we have to do something about that. Uh, and so I was thinking we, it's going back into this range here. And Dave pointed out to me that, no, if it goes, if it does go down, it's going to go all the way down here. So plan B actually uh, should be that we buy down here or actually wait for it to come down and then wait for a bounce back or look for a buy for a bounce back. Uh, to correct ourselves, particularly because I was doing light trading. I was doing a bigger volume size. Now, um, if you're in, uh, uh, so that's a plan A and B for buys. If you're in sells um, and you're taking a sell here and it does go up, then you have to look to the bigger time frames for plan B to find out where your action point is up here where you want to load onto sells. So let's see what happened. And sure enough, you were right. <laughs> Dave was right. It did go up. 
And so now it becomes a question of exit. So at this point, we should be securing. And um, uh, I, I'm thinking, I'm trying, I can't remember where we did secure or what we did happen, what did happen here. I think we probably, I think I may have secured uh, on this, on this pullback here. Um, but that's the next step for the, for, for the, um, uh, uh, that would be the next step of securing. Um, but the, uh, so that's where we went with that. Uh, and that, that helped me realize about the market conditions affecting market structure. Now, uh, this is the, the, uh, challenge that's most important to me at the moment. I simply can't seem to let my winners run. I have such a hard time getting um, green that when I have it, I want to get out while the getting is good. I definitely want more green. <laughs> and so I keep trying to collect little greens. But the result of that, the consequence of that we saw was that uh, the, um, the, the, the equity curve takes a big hit when you do take a loss because you're you're not can, connect, collecting enough green to go over to compensate for those. Um, and so that's where the secure comes in. If you're slow and steady as you're secure, you're slowly waiting for the market to give you your green. And so you take your secure at that point. So um, I actually looked into the internet to see how do you deal with uh, avoid cutting winners and several things came up that I mentioned here. And I've tried all of these at some point. I've tried the first three for sure. Um, you want to walk away. Now, of course, if you're scalping, that's not easy to do. You can't just ignore it. Um, you'd put your stop loss way too far and you'd end up with a huge loss again um, with, without uh, taking your, your trade. But you can distract yourself. I noticed that when Nate is trading and he's waiting for things to happen, he'll draw all his lines and look at price cycle sizes and so on. Uh, so you do something to distract yourself while keeping an eye on the trade because you're watching for it to uh, reach your setup. Uh, the other thing I've tried is what I call double trading. In other words, put on two trades when you start out and use one of those to take your quick profit uh, and then let the other one run. Um, and that sort of helps, but if you're doing what I'm trying to do now, which is increase the volume, that just doubles your risk. So you do have to be careful with that. But um, if you wanna try it for an exercise in a, in a, um, a practice account, that's one thing you can do. Um, then the, old, the third thing is, uh, is to review your old trades. When you've taken those losses, when you've taken those quick winners, see if you were right, go back and look at them. There was a period where when I was taking these quick winners, I was always right to take the quick winners. So that tells me I was picking the direction wrong. So what I need to fix at that point was the direction. Because lately what I notice is that when I look at the trades where I took the quick winners, um, almost all of them uh, went in the direction that I was originally waiting for, um, maybe to their, uh, maybe to the, even the setup goal. And that was Dave's suggestion was make sure you he thinks secure your trades when you're taking winner, when you're cutting your winners is the solution. And that's true, but it only works if you've got your trade to a point where you have some place where you can secure. Um, what I was finding is that I'd see green and then it would start to turn around and it'd give me a loss bigger than what the green was. And so that's why I started taking the quick winners because I didn't was tired of taking those losses. So there's really two parts to it and that's where the plan A and B come in. If you have decided ahead of time uh, where you're supposed to take your winner and let that happen, um, you're, you um, can hold out and you uh, secure at that point or secure when you get to that point. So uh, I'm gonna take a look at uh, trying to use that, that plan for um, our trade. Let's do this. Let's use our community effort here. Um, if you're an analytical person, too many cooks can spoil the broth. If you're looking for too many of the correct signs, too many things that are correct, uh, too many uh, uh, indicators that give you the go ahead. Uh, on the other hand, it, it's, it's true that many hands do make light work, that uh, when we have a community, we have input from a lot of different people and they often point things out that, that we may not be seeing. 
So Megan wants to know if I take winners, I'm rushing for max profit. I'm not even near at max profit when I'm taking my quick winner. <laughs> I, I, I see where the max profit's supposed to be and I'm afraid it's not gonna get there because I've had too many situations where I waited for max profit and then it turned around and gave back all my uh, wins. So I'm gonna ask the community to help with this, this uh, structure here. So let's take a look at this this chart. So I'm going to af tell you again, what we started again was a down day. We This was a sell day. It was a downtrend in the hour market. Then we came to this minute mark, minute, minute uh, and this is what the market looked like when we looked at the minute chart. So um, another, I see, I saw another M. I said, okay, so this is where we want to sell. Um, but remember our price cycle rule. You don't want to take a sell at the end of a price cycle. Uh, in the same direction. But we have here a zero and a one. And we also have uh, the uh, one we said we don't trust the one. Well, we're a little bit past the one here, the first touch, because we've gone out a couple of candles. So again, I'm gonna ask the community either in chat or uh, if you can annotate or with your microphone, what do you do here? Would you, do you see sells, do you see buys? <laughs> we're going to talk about that that's you, you can go both directions anybody else yeah nick wants to wait for a sell um that's a good question what are we waiting for are we waiting for a retracement or are we waiting for um so nick wants to wait for a retracement anybody else this looks like an m to me um uh, that's so what do you think megan does it look like an m Yes, I would sell, but I wouldn't sell there. I'd wait for it to pull up and then. All right. Um, and then we have a suggestion to, to buy to the action point. So the action point, we have an action point here. Um, so we could, that doesn't give us a lot of room. So we got to look for another action point. Here's an action point. We might be able to buy to that action point. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. So let's take a, let's look at both sells and buys. Okay, so now, oh, now we got a pullback. So maybe we're in cells now. That's true, it's not a confirmed M. It's only a confirmed M mm -hmm. when it actually breaks. So so that's why we're, uh, we're I, I actually took a cell before the pullback here at this point. Um, but let's talk about the plans that you would use if you were selling or buying. So we said that if we were gonna sell at a pullback, so now the sellers and sells, the buyers are in buys going looking for a pullback to this action point. We're not quite at that action point. So the buyers haven't made uh, their profit yet. Um, but what the buyers, was somebody saying something? Sorry. What the buyers are waiting for um, are for is to go in their direction. And if there's any pullbacks to uh, take the pullbacks. The plan B for the buyers would be to buy again down here. We do have some points where we can fix our buys. So their plan B for buyers would be down here. Sellers now, uh, we're just in a sell because we have a pullback. So if we, uh, if it goes in our direction, we're uh, building on, on pullbacks down here, but our plan B says we wanna sell. In my case, I'd probably have to wait for a sell all the way up here because um, I'm a light trader. So it depends on what your what your style is. So let's see what happens. Okay, sellers are happy now. We're looking for that break of the M. And there it is in the next candle. And in fact, it's gone down. So are we uh, securing yet? Any of your sellers wanna secure? Yeah, next, I'm securing because I'm, I'm impatient. I want to get it well, it's good. So where would we secure? Well, um, we're looking for an action point. We want to secure at the bottom at a body. Um, okay, if we secure up there, we're we're taking a loss. So we don't want to secure for, I don't want to secure for a loss. <laughs> um, but uh, at least here we would have a, a, a some profit. So I would prefer to secure there. Um, Brandon wants to secure above the center of the M. Okay. 
Let's see what happens. Okay, so we haven't hit either secure yet. And now we're moving back farther down. So this is good. Oh, and now we've stopped. We've reached this action point. Let me see if I can get this down now. So let's see what happened here. Okay, we still haven't hit our secure, so we're still in this trade, or we haven't hit my secure, anybody's secure yet. Uh, is anybody moving secures? Did anybody move, sec move secure? I should have asked ahead of time, but did anybody move secures when we got down to this point, or did anybody take profit? Okay, we want to put a secure here. Yeah, that's about where my original secure was. Take profit at the bottom, yeah. You can, that's your max profit. Before the sell, that's your max profit. So if you're taking max profit, um, you might be doing a prove me wrong. We're expecting, we, 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 it could go back, but we're at max profit. So we could secure for uh, profit. So now the adders are adding in at this point. Let's see if we get any help for the adders. And we actually go down and this is where I hit my goal at the, for this day. I don't have any further points, but there always is a retracement. So it might come back up. So, um, I don't, I'm afraid to pronounce your name, <laughs> but the adders, uh, we're gonna have to wait for that retracement if, unless you've, you've crossed your uh, point of no return wherever your setup was, depending on how many trades you had. So thank you for participating in that. Um, so the moral of the story is there's a lot of issues that we're still working on, that I'm still working on. Okay, thanks for clearing that, okay. Um, but it's going to take, I know it's going to take me time. And, uh, but on the other hand, we're in, we have a great opportunity here with the trade, the fund, because if anybody was with us in January, you saw we how we thought we had opportunities with the prop firms and then, um, that kind of fell apart. But right now we still have, uh, David's still willing to teach, to, to uh, teach us and work with us. And we have a tremendous, a lot of talent in this community. Uh, Nick is a natural teacher. He's very good at answering questions and explaining things. And um, Josh has that these insights for the um, uh, stock market. And Duke, of course, has been uh, very helpful to a lot of us. And and uh, 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 wants to you know shows us the uh, jet engine part of this trading. Um, and uh, of course, Pete. Uh, always has something to offer. I don't know who's here, but um, I can't mention everybody, but everybody who's been in the pot seat, I told you, already told you, you need to watch Megan's class if you haven't from a couple of weeks ago. Um, so there's a lot of talent here. There's a lot of opportunity and they're all good people. They're all willing to help us and work with us. So um, I highly suggest that if you're new to the community that uh, this is a good time to, to take advantage of it and um, learn from David and the rest of us while we can. So, um, that pretty much is all we have time for. I just, I didn't plan to hit the whole hour, but um, if anybody has any questions or suggestions, I'm open to hearing what we've got to say. Well, I, I for one, absolutely just love your presentation. The only problem with your entire presentation was at the very, very, very first that I t vehemently disagree with where you said you're a level one trader. A level one trader would not be able to put a presentation like this together and know as much as you know. So I, I am absolutely, I, I, you must have listened to what I said in our last fast track class where I said, I don't really have a good video that kind of gives a, a good, a great breakdown of, of what we do, how we do it um, for new people. And you just gave us that. And so I really, really appreciate that. And I'm definitely going to memorialize this and, and uh, make sure that this is a, a prerequisite for anybody new joining um, trade the fund that they, they need to watch this, right? Because this is, this is just definitely covers a lot of the basics um, and touches a lot. And like I said, a level one trader wouldn't know all this stuff. So I loved your presentation, except for that first part. Yeah, I I disagree with you. One hundred percent, you're a level one trader. 
<laughs> like, thank you, but I really have told you more than I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But I agree with Boz, what Boz says. You are definitely <laughs> better than me in, in many, many ways. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for well, that. Mary Lynn, I think that it's only been a year. And I look back to that year when you were a brand new trader. And what was going through my head as you're with every screen, you were just you know, building, building, building the method and putting the pieces together. And I was thinking, wow, this is a lot to know. And you have cracked it. You really have. Well, thank you for well, proving what I said about being a very generous community. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we tell you the truth. So you, you, my favorite part of working with you um in the th in the in the three days that we had together um was that you were very very coachable and willing to do whatever it took and the fact that i'm it, it's been a couple of weeks so you got to remind me but i'm pretty confident that we hit goal every day that we traded together and we did yeah we hit, like one day i hit, gave some of it back but we did hit <laughs> and and we actually set like your best ever days together with you, right? That's and, right. Man. And you were able to really kind of just grow. And so that's what I love. Um, and my favorite part in trading with you for those three days was just to see you kind of come out of your shell um, a little bit and say, you know what, I can do this in your confidence just just rose and it, it's proven evident here in your presentation tonight that um you you know you have the knowledge and now with those three days we were able to kind of show you you show you that you don't need me to tell you to push the buttons you knew how to do it you just needed you just need confidence right you just need to to continue um with that with with your confidence and you know and i mean you're going to surpass a lot of people um, here shortly with, with your newfound confidence. What would you say was, you know, your biggest aha moment or takeaway from those three days or your, your, your awakening, if you will. Yeah. I actually said it was the ability to actually make goal in, in <laughs> <the> trades <laughs> because I've been so frustrated for so long, not making goal. And since then I, I'm getting closer and closer to making goal. Um, as I said, I'm still struggling with the winners, cutting the winners, but um, and now it, it seems to be in sight. It seems there seems to be hope. You can you can see the the target line is on your chart finally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, um, I know this was a for 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 some of us here tonight. Um, it was a good refresher course for others. It was a great. Um, okay, so this is this is what you do, of course. And like I said, it's great for beginners, but um I I I loved it. Um, does anybody have any any questions for her or um any any, any thoughts before we kind of wrap up here tonight? All right, well, the crickets are chirping, so <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> well, I appreciate I appreciate you one taking the time to do this, and two, um, I've appreciated you. I know that you've had, like you said um, in earlier in presentation, that you've had a little bit of health issues along the way. But the one thing that you never have done, even with your health issues in tech, is I don't feel like you've missed a day. Right? You even though maybe you're not trading, you've still been listening, and it's proven evident in your presentation tonight of how much that you've learned even when you can't trade. So thank you, Mary Lynn, for a, such a wonderful presentation. And um, I can't wait to trade with you again. So schedule another hot seat soon and, and let's get, and let's, uh, let's get you going again. Let's get you back in. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Thanks guys. We will see you guys in the AM. Thank you very much. Good night guys. Good night.